Coming up this week on Sporting Journal Radio. Is this going to take off in the fishing world or are people going to get mad about this technology? It's game on. I've already seen a lot of big uh, pictures of big big walleyes coming out. And 2024 open water regs, Formulax and Red. You know, little things that you can do to draw the deer into your stand in front of your cameras. I fish, I hunt, and always will. Broadcasting from the Al Clare Outdoor Studios. Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. <laughs> We're not just a radio show anymore. This is Sporting Journal Radio. Yes, it is. Amanda, we got a lot to get to. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brett, Brett Amundsen. That's Dan Amundsen over there. And David Eckhart, how's it going, fellas? Good. Yo. Malax has been a big topic and it's going to continue to be a big topic. In fact, I think it's going to get even bigger. I like how, Dan, you posted it on sportingjournalradio.com, the new regs for this summer, and then shared it on social media and then just put in a comment right away that I'm just going to grab the popcorn for this one. Well, people are going to be, uh, okay, I guess I can't switch to my camera right Not now. Not happy. Not happy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll tell you why they won't be happy. That's David. We'll oh. tell you why they won't be happy coming up in a little bit as uh, the DNR has announced new regs for Mille Lacs this summer. Uh, we also going to re- we will also recap the Minnesota Deer and Turkey Classic. What were some of the cool things that I saw there? I'll tell you coming up. We've got a Rainy River update for you. We're announcing our third annual SGR 500 tournament. We'll tell you about that too. And uh, we got some other stuff to get to. Uh, but first, Dan, who are the sponsors this week on the show? Invergrove Toyota, the official truck sponsor of Fish Hunt Forever is Invergrove Toyota. When looking for your new rig, head to Invergrove Toyota, Habel Heights Campground and Resort, fish out of a snowboard, or get ready for a summer trip on Devil's Lake. Learn more at HabelHeights.com. Onyx Hunt, landowner information, public land access, and much, much more. Know where you stand with Onyx Hunt. Prairie Sportsman, new episodes return this Sunday, uh, but you can watch other episodes anytime at the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. Lake of the Woods Tourism. The Rainy River is open and Lake of the Woods is the walleye capital. Plan a trip for this winter, spring, or summer at Lake of the Woods. MN.com, the Midwest Wild Sheep Foundation. Annual Banquet Fundraiser is March 15th and 16th at the Minneapolis Marriott Southwest in Minnetonka. Learn more at MidwestWildSheep.com. I do have to tell you, Dan, uh, my wife and I were watching my wife. last week's show, and Lindsay said, wow, Dan has just really been killing it with reading off the sponsors. That's hey. such good editing on my part. So, did, you, did, you tell tell her tell the, did you tell her the truth of how I don't do it that well? <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure you called it a snow bore. Fish out of a snowboard. Oh, I was like, so really I'm, hoping no one was going to catch that. <laughs> I was like, is that a different model than the snow bear? Is that a competitor? What? Yeah, what I, I got an exclusive from from Adam. And I don't want to seem like we're piling on you, Dan, because because that was a compliment actually that you did do right. a good job. <laughs> but David and I, I think we need to teach you how to use a, an airplane pillow. Okay. Yes. Really? You think so? I think so. <laughs> no, I had this. I had these. Uh, documents these websites my research all pulled up so dan went to washington dc last week which i i regardless of how you feel about politics and our current administration all that good stuff how cool is that to go see the nation's capital see uh washington monument and uh, uh the uh, the lincoln memorial and all of those cool places i and probably the national archives dan you thought was the coolest place of that trip so much of that was cool i know so people tune into this show to listen to his blap about hunting and fishing, but right. um, this was like the first non-hunting or fishing trip I've taken in a very long time. And you, you decide to put me in a city for like five days. It's kind of weird, but it was way cool. You know, we saw, we got to walk through the White House. We got to walk through the Capitol. We saw, um, you know, regardless of what you think of the president, which most of you can probably guess the way I lean, um, we saw the motorcade of him going from the White House to the Capitol for the State of the Union address. And we saw him leave to go to Philadelphia in the helicopter, Marine One, I think they call it. Um, both way cool. Like, again, yeah. don't care what you think of the guy. Way cool to see that stuff happening. Um, the history we got to see was way cool. We saw the, dec- the Declaration of Independence. Uh, Nicholas Cage returned it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Magna Carta, you know, a, a document from the 1200s. To see that, like with your own eyes, that's the legit one. 
is way cool. The Constitution, the Bill of Rights, that's all in the National Archives. Um, we even saw some old duck hunting history in one of the restaurants, a bunch of old decoys and some guns and stuff. Uh, way cool. I think that's a place that every American should go. Um, if you want to take a day or take a trip that's not hunting or fishing with the family, especially if you have kids that are older, like high school or up, I think if they can really understand the history of what they're seeing, it's uh, a way cool trip. And the Potomac River flows through there, so you can do some fishing. I think a Washington, D.C. fishing license is like 10 bucks. Hmm. So you can catch fish out there, too. It's 10 bucks, but if you catch a fish, they tax you on it. They tax well, the yeah, and, and then you, you can't vote. But <laughs> So um, show us how you were wearing your airplane pillow, Dan. Hang on. <laughs> I got to grab it. Uh, like this. Because this is how you do it. This way. It's all black. It all blends in. Yeah. Like this. I'm telling you. Because then if you're sleeping on the plane, your head goes like this. Now you don't have a sore neck. But, you know, you see everyone. It, uh, it honestly makes airport. a lot of sense. Yeah, you see everyone walking through the airport like this. Yeah. But what happens when you sit down in the airplane seat and you lean back? Those are like, you're like this. It gets all bound up. So um, I think that might have to be my uh, next tree stand accessory. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Or live scope. When you fall asleep, when you fall asleep in the tree stand and you wake up and your neck hurts. And You know, honestly, I want to make fun of you for it, Dan. But uh, I bought one of those uh, years back when I was doing some traveling and I, <laughs> see and uh the article is literally called we've all been wearing travel pillows right? yeah i didn't like it i stopped using it i think i threw it away actually but i when we were talking about this before the show i was googling it and i saw some of the new ones actually wrap all the way around now so you have that kind of that you could do that and you're not yeah this one buttons up in my in the back there so oh, yeah yeah or like some would say in the front like this yeah <laughs> well if you think that's the front wrong you're wrong wrong Totally um, probably made in China. Well, we're going to stay with the Capitol theme, only we'll go to the state Capitol later in the show with Joe Henry. He's down there. We'll find out why he's at the Minnesota State Capitol, plus get a Rainy River Accesses report from him, from him coming up later in the show. And Rainy River, we got the SGR 500 coming back this year, April 9th and 10th. It's a walleye and sturgeon no two-day fishing fish donkey contest, catch and release fish donkey contest. Although, as we'll talk to Joe about, the lake might be open and you can still keep fish that time of year on the lake. You just can't. Well, we'll figure out how that works. If you catch fish and keep them, what, if you're coming back on the rainy, you got to do some things. So we'll get to the bottom of that coming up later in the show. So the SGR 500, the third annual, uh, at Riverbend Resort on the rainy river, find out more details at sportingjournalradio.com. And we, yeah! we, I want to talk about Mille Lacs here in just a little bit, but, um, before we get to that, I had a really good time at the deer and turkey classic. We're going to hear from some of the people that I interviewed while we're there, including Melissa Bachman, Pat Nicole Reeve, um, uh, Jamie Rockney, the Chick of the Woods, and uh, some more people coming up. In fact, Jen Pudence and I walked around. She's from Adventurous Magazine. She'd never been to that show before, so I took her on a tour. We brought the cameras, and you'll be able to watch some of that. In fact, you can watch the full video right now at the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel, uh, so go there and check it out. We'll also have videos to watch. We watched a video that we will break down and talk about coming up a little bit later with Jay Siemens and the future of fishing. What is he talking about? It's some new technology, good or bad. We'll discuss it a little bit later. But I think um, this Deer Classic, Dan, if you want to play it, like obviously one of the highlights is the trophy wall because the bucks that you can see there at this show every year are so cool. The drumstick book, Minnesota State record, typical book? for archery. Did you say book? The drumstick. Is drum that a new model? <laughs> <laughs> buck. Buck. Mm. That's a little, it's, well, it's probably the same. as Nice Bear. try. Anyway, uh, some pretty cool stuff there. Uh, Melissa Bachman, of course, she's always, when you walk right in, you can see her at the uh, Wildlife Research Center booth. People stop up and uh, get some autographs and take pictures, and you get to talk to Melissa a little bit while you were there. Uh, also, there's a new state record non-typical whitetail that was found as a deadhead. Look at this buck right here down in southeast Minnesota. We were able to see that up close. And right next to that was actually uh, the brother-sister duo who shot elk in Minnesota. It's Gary Prezequas and his sister, Shar Peterson. Gary's is the new number one non-typical 10 by 11. When he scored it before it got mounted, it scored her like 413 and something. And then somehow he said after the taxidermist got it, the rack like folded in or something. He lost six inches somewhere along the, the way. Things tend to do that when they get in the live well after a bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's Shrink. a little bit of shrinkage. Yeah. Uh, still, it officially scores around 406. I guess it's the new number one non-typical elk in Minnesota. Just an absolute giant. And then she shot a 7x7. Seven seven. It's like a 367 or something. It's still just a big, big elk. But when you when you see them side by side, man, that other one is crazy. Speaking of side by sides. Yeah. So t- you guys tell me, do you guys think this is alligator or snake skin for these seats right here? We were trying to figure out. We just stopped by. That's Jen there taking a look at it. We just stopped by and we're like, we thought it. Was, I thought it was snakeskin at first. She's like, oh, it kind of looks like alligator. Um, I can't say that I'm an expert in reptile skins. Yeah, I'd and, say it's probably alligator. But I mean, snakeskin wouldn't make a good seat. Does why cl- not? It's flaky. Is it? Yeah. Oh, the scales are flaky. Right. Or snake. Look at snakeskin boots. They're. You can see each individual scale. So I don't think I've ever looked at snakeskin boots, to be honest mm, with you. No. I need to get You're some not that cool. Wow. <laughs> at least I wear my neck pillow, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you think you know what it is, or maybe you do know what it is, or if you have a guest, comment below uh, here on our YouTube channel, please. Uh, also, I think one of the coolest things I saw, we were in the uh, Wild Trails Kid Zone, and Broden Studios had a booth there. Actually, it's called Bronze Bucks. And they... Like, say you're running... David, are you running out of wall space at your house for mounts? Yes. Yes, I am. So if you shoot a buck and you want some sort of replica or memento of some sort, they will 3D scan your rack and then either do a miniature mount. They'll they'll do a buck, like the small bronze buck, and then they'll actually replicate your rack on top of that little buck and you can put it on your desk, on a shelf, wherever. Or they'll actually take like a side of your rack, like a shed and make it in a 25 pound bronze replica. Holy smokes. I don't know if you've got that video there or not, Dan, Mm. but uh, Broden Studios, they make uh, military fire and police statues. They're out of Kimball, Minnesota, actually. Mm. And uh, they just, in the last year or so, they started getting into the outdoor side of things and making these bronze replicas. Uh, it was crazy. Like, we we went over and picked up one of the racks and was like, oh, <laughs> like, oh, how much is that weigh? 25 pounds. Holy smokes. So You, you can't can, lift that much or what? No, I'm, I'm very weak. You can see the full interview or hear the full interview coming up later in the show with uh, Sam Ellinger from uh, Broden Studios or Bronze Bucks or uh, see images of it now on the Fish Hunt Forever YouTube channel on the walkthrough of the Minnesota Deer and Turkey Classic. All right. Uh, we got to take a quick break. Uh, Before we do that, though, we got to let you know a new episode of Prairie Sportsman is back this Sunday night on Pioneer PBS or the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. Dan, it's a Dick Hiley Bass Classic. What a cool event that was. One mil- oh, I thought you were going to say something there. One, <laughs> they raised over a million dollars for the St. Jude Children's Hospital. Check it out this Sunday night, 7.30 p.m. on Pioneer PBS stay there. It doesn't get much better than fresh perch and fresh walleye. If you're looking for an exciting winter fishing destination, come to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort is on the ice with a fleet of snow bears keeping you mobile and warm so you can stay on the roaming schools of fish. Hay Bale Heights on the east end of Devil's Lake has knowledgeable guides, comfortable cabins, and their own lake access making your trip as successful and stress-free as possible. To book your trip, go to haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. All right, welcome back. I'm Brett Amundsen along with Dan Amundsen and David Eckhart here on Sporting Journal Radio. David, um, you were telling us before the show that there's some new Kid Rock Rodeo or something and it features a local kid? Yeah, so it's the Kid Rock Rock and Rodeo on May 17th in Arlington, Texas. It's in conjunction with the PBR World Championship that's on the 18th and 19th at AT AT&T Stadium. He's doing a five-team head-to-head competition for the winning team gets a million dollars. And Tanner Oz, uh, Granite Falls local, went to high school with him, um, is part of one of the teams. Really? Yeah. So, so t- there's like 10 people total in this? Uh, 16 people 16. per team and five oh. teams. Oh. oh and there was okay. eight, 800 people applied to be on the teams, and he got into one of the teams. So what, He was drafted or something? Wasn't yeah, somebody so they, drafted I think him? they did a team draft and... So, yeah, he got drafted onto one of the teams for the million-dollar competition. That's wild. So 16 people on a team and five teams. So yep. 80 people. There's going to be 80 riders. Yep. Okay. In seven different events. Oh, okay. So, so what does Tanner do then? He does bareback. So there's two bareback riders per team. and Yeah, that'll be pretty interesting. It's so, a pretty cool opportunity. Yeah, you graduated with him. Yep. From Granite. Did... Uh, 
Um, was he was he doing rodeo stuff back in high school and he was growing up? Yep, yeah, he, he did high school, life, obviously. High school, high, uh, high school rodeo and just carried on through college and into the NFR. And did you when, looking back on it, watching him do that? Did you think he'd take it this far? I, th- I yeah, I think so. He kind of always had that goal, and um, yeah, he's he's living it. Did, was he was he doing horse stuff too, or always riding bulls, or what was he doing? Uh, Little bit he of rides horse, the bareback horse. Oh, that's horse ride. Yep. Oh, oh, okay. Yep. Oh, all right. I thought it was, all right. I had no idea what we were talking about. <laughs> Big thought, rodeo guy. I was, yeah. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I thought you were talking about bull riding. Okay. So bareback. So what's he doing? What is that? What, he's just going to get on a horse and try to stay on that for eight seconds too? Yep. Or what? And they're going to try to buck him off? Gotcha. Yep. All right. What? I mean, real men ride bulls though, right? I mean. <laughs> I don't know. Bareback just kidding, is pretty hard. <laughs> just kidding. No, no. That's way cool, man. So um, um, I saw, Pi- that's a guy that Pioneer PBS just did a special yep. on too, right? Just did a postcards on him. Postcards. Was postcards, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. yeah. They did a screening at uh, the PBS station there in Granite Falls. Very cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you so think do you think he could get us tickets? Or I don't know. That would be pretty fun to go to. <laughs> <laughs> get us in. That'd be sweet. I'm going to be like, where's all the bulls at? Well, they're the next day. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, cool. That and So that's brand new. Hey, Kid Rock doing a, a rodeo? Yeah. Okay. Yep. First. Can first I just annual. clarify in no part of anything you described, did you say it was horses versus bulls? It's just. Well, it's a whole rodeo event. So it's, you know. So there's bull riding as part there's of There's also bull riding. All right. I'm just defending myself just uh, a little bit. I mean, saddle bronc, can barrel I, racing, can I, can team I, roping. Do they put saddles on bulls ever, Brett? I don't know. So why would it be a separate category? I have no idea. Yeah. I don't ride bulls. Do I look like someone that rides bulls? Well, do I look like someone that rides bulls? I'm wearing a neck pillow. Don't <laughs> <read this show>. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh. But I knew. Oh, I knew. I I oh did you? Yeah. Oh good for you. <laughs> Sorry. I gotta call you out when you deserve it. Anyway. You're wrong about neck pillows and you're wrong about rodeo. <laughs> wrong. You lose. No, that's uh, that's way cool, man. Well, wish him luck if you talk to him. Otherwise, yeah. Tanner, good luck if you're watching this. That's uh, really cool. All right. Um, coming up uh, a little bit later, we're going to talk to uh, Joe Henry, get a Rainy River update. We'll also talk to some of the people like Melissa Bachman and Pat Nicole Reeve from Driven TV. We interviewed them at the Deer Classic. We'll have them later in the show. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about the future of fishing in the Jay Siemens uh, video that he put out here recently. But first, I got to tell you about something happening this weekend in the Twin Cities. The the uh, Midwest Wild Sheep Foundation, the Midwest Chapter of the Wild Sheep Foundation, their annual fundraiser and banquet is coming up uh, this weekend, March 15th and 16th at the Minneapolis Marriott in Minnetonka. They have all kinds of stuff there. This is a really cool event and they auction off. This is some big some big money stuff too, which is, uh, which is great because it's going to put more sheep on the mountain. It's going towards habitat and wildlife conservation. They are going to auction off the big three, the South Dakota, North Dakota, and Wyoming bighorn sheep license. And those things, it's amazing just to watch these when they do like live auctions for these things because the money just keeps going and going. And Better hope you don't get an itch on your nose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The first year I was there, uh, I think that South Dakota one, I think it was the first year the South Dakota one went to auction. It was like $96,000 or something. That's insane. crazy. Uh, also, Austin Atkinson and Robert Hanneman from The Hunt and Fool will be there. And then they're going to uh, they, they're going to have two statewide youth turkey tags in South Dakota that they're going to be giving away. So find out more at Midwest Wild Sheep dot com. The Wild Sheep Foundation annual fundraiser and banquet March 15 and 16 Minneapolis Marriott in Minnetonka videos that you should watch. Uh, we all watch this one, right, David? Yep. <laughs> you had one job, one homework assignment. Yeah, I saw some no, clips David. from it. <laughs> How crazy is this? I saw somebody else post about these glasses that you could watch your live scope on. I don't remember where I saw it first, and then all of a sudden Jake did a video. So you went out and bought some glasses, and not this is uh, um, not only will these glasses so they look like sunglasses. And then you plug them into your phone and then you pair your phone through the Active Captain app to your Garmin Live Scope. And basically it's like screen mirroring your your live scope through your phone, which then sends a signal into your sunglasses. So you can see through the image. So when you're looking around the lake or wherever you're at, you can see through your live scope image, but then you can also watch your live scope without sitting down looking at your electronics. So all those people that are complaining about 
the bass or the tournament anglers just staring down at electronics the whole time. Now they're just going to be staring off into space because yeah, they can see their live, live scope and their sunglasses. But then he also put on YouTube and he was watching YouTube on those glasses <laughs> as well while he was fishing, which I thought was pretty wild. Dan, what do you think? Is this going to is this going to take off? in the fishing world or are people going to get mad about this technology too? Well, thing of it is, so I got to get serious here. I can't wear this. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to take the neck. Yeah, let's off. get serious. So I, at first I locked, watched that and I thought, okay, is this really going to be beneficial? Like, yeah, you're not going to have a sore neck. Now, granted, if you wore a neck pillow the right way, you wouldn't have a sore neck either. <laughs> but um, the one cool part that I actually saw a benefit to, well, A, you're not going to stare down at it, but is when he went and drilled a hole you know, he, he saw the school of fish 50 feet out or whatever, and he could leave his live scope where it is, and he could walk 50 feet, drill the hole, and he could see right then and there when he drilled the hole if he punched through where he needed to be without having to have someone back at the live scope or the forward-facing sonar saying, yep, you missed, you got it, or you're five feet off. So that was really cool. Now, open water, right now, I'm sure this technology will progress, but I can't see it being a huge benefit to open water because, right, if I'm looking left, I'm looking right, it still doesn't change where my live scope is looking. So no matter what, I'm still going to have to look down at where my pole is pointed, where my trolling motor is pointed. However, I have that transducer oriented. So I, I can't see it. Honestly, I think I would get more confused if I'm looking over here to my right and I, I'm looking through my glasses, but my live scope's pointed left and I see a fish on the live scope. It's going to might actually add more confusion to myself. So I, I don't see it being there yet. Um, It'll probably get there. There might, there'll probably be some way where they get it, where when you turn your head, you can it turns turn your the transducer, turns the transducer, yeah. the trolling motor or something. I mean, heck, uh, there's technology where if you just point the trolling motor remote one way, it'll turn that way. So that's Jay, probably coming. Jay actually said that in the video too. He said, yeah. hey, Garmin, there's something to work on. I'm sure it's coming. Mm. Um, but to people that are mad about it, would you be mad about casting the flasher to glasses? I mean... You know, if I could fly, or if I could cast my Vexel art to my sunglasses, are you gonna be upset about that? There's not really the benefit there, so it's still, it's not changing the effectiveness of live scope a whole ton. It's kind of just making a few things a little more convenient if you want to shell the money out for it. Yeah, I mean, I the way I lose sunglasses, I'm not gonna. <laughs> but, but the the funniest part, I don't know if any of you guys read through the comments of the video that no. video. It's it, there's it wasn't really. I thought there'd be more controversy on it. There really wasn't. But there's a couple that just made me laugh. Um, the amount of Ray Charles comments there are. <laughs> well, he did look blind. And it was funny. Like he'd start fishing, and all of a sudden you'd just see Jay like looking up into the sky, and he'd be like. Like he was not looking anywhere near his rod yeah. or his electronics like, or the lake for that matter. They said it was like watching Ray Charles ice fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really good side by side. That is Thanks. pretty good. <laughs> Did you make that? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. awesome. That's perfect. Well, it's really cool. Check it out on the Jay Siemens YouTube channel. Hey, uh, new regs came out. We have to talk about this real quick. Uh, 2024 open water regs for Mille Lacs and red. You can read all of this at sportingjournalradio.com. But Mille Lacs walleye fishing will be catching and release during the spring and early summer of 2024. I, I, I don't remember what it was last year, but I can't believe it's probably it. just one. Fish. I cannot believe that it's going to be catch and release. People are going to flip. If you've seen like uh, the Linders have been talking about this. Uh, Brett McComas went off about this recently. The, Follow the, the science. The health of Mille Lacs right now. The walleye seem very, very healthy and it's going to be catch and release. And then the potential to harvest a walleye between 21 and 23 or longer than 28 coming up in August. So you may not be able to keep a fish on Mille Lacs until August 16th. And that's not even early summer. That's like most of the summer. That's insane. Also, Red Lake will be thing. a three walleye limit until uh, June, I believe, and it goes to four. Find all the regs, the new regs at Sporting Journal Radio. Dot com. And if you're looking for a new truck, check out our official truck sponsor, Invergrove Toyota. They've got some new interest rates on 2024 Tundras. Uh, new finance programs from Toyota Financial got released recently. Uh, two and a quarter percent for 48 months on Tundras. That's that's insane. Or four and a quarter for 60 months. Uh, these will be in effect through April 1st. Go there to Invergrove Toyota or go to InvergroveToyota.com slash FHF for Fish Hunt Forever. And we'll save a couple hundred bucks on a new Tundra for you as well. Check it out. Uh, you can find out more information at FishHuntForever.com. 852 million acres of public land. 147 million private properties. All in the palm of your hand. 
the number one hunting GPS app just got better. With hundreds of custom map layers, 3D and topographic maps, you can easily scout on the road or at home before you go. And now you can get important weather details, CWD detection, and even know what crops have been planted where. Get the most trusted hunting GPS app ever made. Onyx. Know where you stand with Onyx. All right, this is Sporting Journal Radio. I'm Brett Amundsen. Thanks for tuning in on the network by demand, sportingjournalradio.com, or maybe you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, man, Dan was in, in the nation's capital last week, and now Joe Henry is in the state, down at the state capital. Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism. What's going on, Joe? Well, I'll tell you what, you know, uh, Danny, a.k.a. Freddie Mercury, Freddie, you know, he was down at the nation's capital. Now, I'm just trying to hang at the state capital. Big difference there, but you know, that's the difference between a – a sharp looking dude like Danny and uh, tours and director from Lake of the Woods, you know. They don't let anyone in there. No, they really don't. You, you, you weren't drinking Bud Light when you were out down there, were you? Well, our options were a little limited, but uh, we, we, found our, we found our way. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, uh, today we're down to the state capitol. Um, it's Hospitality Minnesota's day at the capitol. So, you know, as much as I'd rather have fishing gear on and be fishing up on the Rainy River right now, you know, once in a while to get things done in the outdoors, you have to put on a suit and tie and head down to the capitol. And, uh, you know, I had a chance to have some nice conversations with uh, some senators and representatives already today. Had a chance to meet with Bob Meyer of uh, Assistant Commissioner of the DNR. Um and we're trying to get some things done on behalf of uh, not only Lake Lewis, but also the state of Minnesota. And, uh, you know, everything from, from keep it clean to advocating for small businesses who uh, had a tough winter, um, trying to fight for uh, per perhaps uh, some funding from the state for, for small businesses who, who suffered because of both lack of snow and because of uh, warm temperatures and not having the business that we normally would this winter. Um, and, and just in, in other things, too, but really advocating for, for our destinations and, and for the outdoors in our state. Well, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of people in the state that rely on on winter weather because it's Minnesota and it's it's been winter in Minnesota for, you know, it's normally Minnesota has pretty consistent winters for a long, long time. So if you're a snowmobile dealer or a, a, an ice fishing destination, when you have that warm weather, it really cuts into your business, doesn't it? Oh, I tell you what, and uh, you know it does. It cuts into our business. I can tell you up at Lake of the Woods, you know, we we had ice this winter, a good part of the winter, but you know we still got out later than normal. We didn't get our sleeper fish houses out as as much as we, as we would like to. Certainly, the uh, the ice road conditions weren't as good as, as as thick as they normally were, and that deterred some people from coming up. So yeah, you know, certainly our area suffered. That we're one area of many. I mean, the whole state heck the whole uh, ice belt suffered this yeah. year so you know we're doing what we can do for for minnesota and, and for the small business community of minnesota and uh it's uh, outdoor recreation in minnesota in the winter is a big deal and well, uh you know yeah absolutely well and, I, and you mentioned keep it clean and uh, we're happy to announce that we're going to donate to keep it clean again this year at uh, the sgr 500 the third annual coming up april 9th and 10th on the rainy river based out of riverbend resort it's a two-day fish donkey tournament catch and release walleyes and uh and sturgeon and then one other one which usually ends up being a sucker although maybe maybe some burbot this year in the tournament could be yeah, a big could pike. Be. we've got bourbon pike? bourbon pass here that's for sure pike absolutely and uh i know uh people catch crappies on there would, would crappies i don't i don't even think of crappies on the rainy river but they're obviously in there is, is that something is the season open on crappies up there when we're up there it is yep yep the season's open year-round on panfish just like sure. it is the rest of the state but you know uh there's actually a lot of crappies on the rainy river i shot a, a tv show with larry smith last year and we were fishing multi-species on the river and we got a lot of big crappies on the river and i know of i know of many anglers who actually are pursuing crappies on the river now and it's uh, it's kind of one of those fish that just this increase in population most recently, but um, you know that the, what what a nice gesture, Brett, of you guys donating to keep it clean. Now this is the third year that you've done it, and uh, I'll tell you what, it's a it's a hell of a nice gesture. And I'll tell you if you if you you know if you want to fish in a a really casual tournament, a two day tournament, fish donkey, you just use your phone, you let the fish go, it's all catch and release, and it's uh, the, the camaraderie amongst the people going there, of course. The whole Sporting Journal radio crew, I'll be there. You, know, you got Paul Brandy Johnson and a lot of other people just from the industry, but really a nice, nice group. And yeah, we're competitive, but it's also extremely friendly. Yeah, that's, I didn't, I wanted it to be a tournament that's fun with a chance to win some cool prizes, a little bit of cash, but not, not so big that somebody wants to cheat. 
because once yep. somebody once once there's any sort of allegations of cheating, it makes it so hard to, to conduct a tournament like that. And I know a lot of people that do it are just getting out of running tournaments because of that. So I just want it to be a fun, relaxed tournament. Have it have a good party on the rainy river there, and uh, you know get some good fishing in on the rainy. Well, and I'll tell you, what, what a nice segue, because just yesterday, Cooch County was down with their backhoe down to the Nelson Park boat ramp, which is approximately 30 miles east of Bidette, and they uh, they got the remaining shoreline ice, ice out of there. So that boat ramp's wide open for big boats dropping in there off of a trailer. So, so it's game on on the Rainy River. Heck, the Frontier access, the backhoe is down there working on that ice. Frontier is just a little ways downstream from... Uh, from Birchdale, but you know, uh, that that's probably going to be open today, if not in the next day or so. Um, but now you're going to have two accesses open, which divides the traffic going into the rainy river. And then once you get on the rainy river, you know, there's, a, there's quite a bit of open water heading downstream, even though there's shoreline ice yet, but, uh, it's game on. I've already seen a lot of big, uh, pictures of big, big walleyes coming out and, uh, uh, numbers of walleyes, so I don't have an exact line on the bite, but I've seen a lot of Facebook posts of nice walleyes on the rainy river so far. Maybe you have too. Yeah, you know, in the last couple of years, we've we've watched that so closely. Like, gosh, I hope all the accesses are open for the for the yeah. tournament. You know, and this year uh, it doesn't look like we're going to have to worry about that at all. In fact, the rules state that you can fish anywhere on the Rainy River from Franz Jevney to Lake of the Woods out on the main lake if you access it from the Rainy River. You can't fish in any of the tributaries. You can't fish in any of the Canadian waters. But if the lake is open or part of the lake is open, you can go out through the gap and fish out there. Uh, but the limits the limits are a little different out there, Joe. Well, they are. And, and that, this is kind of interesting. So normally in the spring, in our walleye and sauger season is open through April 14th. So normally we have open water in the rainy river, but you can't get to the, the lake. It's iced over through Four Mile Bay and you can't get out there by April 14th. This year, however, we believe that it's possible that we could get out, there could be open water going into the lake. Now, the way the rules state, um, it's catch and release only for walleyes and saugers during the right. spring season from March 1st through April 14th. Catch and release only from Four Mile Bay all the way up the rainy river now if you get past four mile bay which means you're in lake of the woods if there's open water you can be taking your boat out there and catching your your normal limit of walleyes and saugers and for those that don't know it's it's a combined limit of six fish up to four of the six can be walleyes and of course then there's that slot limit 19 and a half to 28 inches you got to put those walleyes back and you can keep one trophy over 28 but you know if that happens that means that people can be slide over to the lake and keep in their walleyes if, if it doesn't happen, if you fish the bay or the river, that's all catch and release, which, and, and that's not a bad thing because, yeah. you know, you, you got a real good shot at catching your personal best walleye during the spring season. Yeah, so that but that makes, you know, that throws another wrinkle in the tournament because the tournament is catch and release. So if you are keeping any of your fish, you're not going to be able to enter them in the tournament. Um, but then if you catch fish and you have to come back into the rainy river, how does how does that work? You have to prove that you caught them out in the lake. Well, yeah, you, there, there's got to be the onus that you were out fishing the lake, and you know, there's it's, it's kind of a it's got to be tough on the conservation officers because yeah, you know, people could, could have legitimately caught them and then they boated back through. The kicker is when you boat back through, you have to go right to a port. You cannot s stop and start fishing on the bay or the river. Okay, there point. you go. There you go. All right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And I know that there'll be some conservation officers out there. And every year we're out there, we see them out there when we're fishing. So they're out there doing their job, which we like to see. Uh, I, yep. I, I absolutely cannot wait to get up there and fish. Uh, Joe, I know Dan's, I think he's, uh, he would leave right now during the show to drive up there. <laughs> we're, could. David, you're ready? Yeah, you got that, yeah, Dan, you go. got that boat ready? That it boat is ready. ready. Had it out. It's, I could hook up and go right now. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Okay, we're going. <laughs> All see right, you later. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's, well, no, Danny, uh, here, here's the thing now. When you get up there, don't be too freaked out because you're still going to see ice anglers. On the other side of the lake, out on the lake right now, we still got pretty good ice conditions, and it's going to be cold this next week. So we still have resorts that are ice fishing. We have some of our resorts that are planning to have their houses out to the – you know, probably until the 1st of April. And uh, so every area is a little different. The thing I always say is work through a, an outfitter or a resort – for you know your, your ice road conditions wherever they're traveling and they'll give you the lowdown on it but yeah we still got full ice fishing going on man the number of walleyes being caught and the number of big pike right now <laughs> i i turn, turn on social media you'll see what i'm talking about
Paul Johnson sent a message, or I think he posted on Instagram the other day to uh, bra- grab your boat and throw the tip ups in. <laughs> Come on yeah. up. Yeah, it's about it too. It, it's confusing. You go to a gas station and you have somebody with a wheelhouse, somebody with a fish house, and they got somebody with a boat. Yeah. And I, I would, I'd feel more comfortable if I was in a boat going on the river, knowing what I'm going to get with, rather than going ice fishing and looking at a boat. But you got to understand it happens every year this time of year. I'm excited for it. All right, Joe, people want to make some plans uh, to get up to the rainy or maybe some late season, you know, uh, ice fishing or start planning a summer trip. What should they do? Uh, I should tell you, Brett, that that Minnesota fish should open on May 11th is going to be killer along that south shore and up at the angle. But you know what? Hey, check out our website. And that is Lake of the Woods, MN. Lake of the Woods, the walleye capital of the world, is calling out to you. From the Northwest Angle to the South Shore and Rainy River, this is the Midwest's number one ice fishing destination. Walleye, sauger, perch, northern pike, and eel power. The fishing on Lake of the Woods is like a world of its own. Experience the most amazing fishing through one of the many full-service resorts featuring heated fish houses, ice transportation, meal plans, and sleeper fish house options. For more information, go to lakeofthewoodsmn.com. All right, we're at the Minnesota Deer and Turkey Classic here at Canterbury Park in Shakopee. If you can't wait to get back into the woods, this event is for you. Let's go inside and check it out. Now we're at the Minnesota Deer Hunters Association booth with Jared Mazurik, the executive director. How's it going? It's good. It's been a great turnout so far. We've had a lot of people come through, sold quite a few memberships, got some new people involved in conservation in in the state of Minnesota, um, and had some really good conversations about the the legislative initiatives that we're working on. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. I'm I'm sure you've had no shortage of conversations about deer and wolves and all of that, but let's address the elephant in the room. Let's talk about uh, deer hunting in northern Minnesota and wolves. What what is MDHA? Uh, what's the stance? What are you doing about it? Yeah, well, I actually I have a piece in Outdoor News right now that's being distributed at this show that really talks about all the different factors contributing to our declining deer herd um, in the northern part of the state. Um, those factors are anything from habitat loss to predation. Um, you know, we've got a lot of predators, namely wolves right now, are the only one that we can't actively manage. Um, and so MDHA is very involved in, in combating all of those different factors. Right now we're working with a couple representatives and senators to try to get a, a mandate for a wolf hunt um, passed in the state of Minnesota. Um, we do a lot of habitat conservation and restoration work. To date we've restored over 80,000 acres of, of public land in the state of Minnesota um, and more and more every day. So we're really trying to do everything we can to, uh, to help our deer herd to revitalize in, in the northern part of the state. And uh, uh, we'd love to have you join us in that in that mission. Yeah, if someone were to ask you right now, why should I join MDHA, what are you going to tell them? Yeah, the biggest thing I would say is it gives you a voice. Um, MDHA, we don't do anything at the Capitol or anything that has to do with the legislation or policy initiative without hearing from our members. You know, every stance we take is a vote that our members have taken. Um, so I don't go to the Capitol and say, here's what Jared Mazurik with MDHA wants to see. It's here's what our 20,000 members around the state want to see. So becoming a member, that gives you a voice in that process and it allows you to shift our policies and our stances and the future of conservation for Minnesota. All right. Anything else on the horizon that you want to talk about at all or anything? Yeah. I mean, we, we're always trying to, to recruit more members to help us with the conservation work, but also really trying to get involved with the next generation of, of hunters in, in the state. Um, so we have our four corn camps coming up this summer. That's for youth ages 11 through 17 um, to get their firearm safety learn everything they need to know to, to be effective and safe hunters so um, definitely check out our four corn camps if that's something that you or or your kids might be interested in all right where can we find out more about you yeah so mndeerhunters.com is our website um, all the information's on there my contact information as well so please reach out with any questions all right jared thank you very much thank you now we're at the wildlife research center booth melissa bachman how's it going it's going great having a one Wonderful day here. Good to see you again. Thank you. you. This is kind of a, you're kind of a fixture here at this booth, aren't you? You know, I've always just really enjoyed coming back. This is my home state. You get mm-hmm. to see so many people. And now for years I've been coming here. I don't even know how many years. It's been a lot. But I get to see kids come back year after year, show me their bucks, show me their pictures, see them grow, compare the pictures. It just makes for such a wonderful environment. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Obviously, people can come meet you here at this booth. And then you're also doing seminars here as well. Yes, I've got seminars each day. Today I have two. Um, 
And so it's just a good way for people to sit down, relax their feet, kick back, and hopefully learn something that they can take back to learn in their hunting. And it's all about deer hunting. This year it's on 10 things to avoid this fall to make you a better hunter. Okay. So we cover everything from... Yeah, give, give me one of the things to you avoid. Know, um, one of the things is, is talking about ways to bring deer, bring bucks in front of your stand. Okay. So Wildlife Research Center's got this brand new golden rope. Well, I got to use it last year. I put it out within two days. I had bucks coming to it. So in the seminar, we talk about, you know, little things that you can do to draw the deer into your stand in front of your cameras to make you more successful. All right. And what, what else have you got going on then outside the show? So I've got a lot of hunts coming up. Um, I've been on the show circuit all fall, um, yeah. you know, all winter. Uh, since Christmas, I've been at a show every weekend. Um, so this is kind of what I love to do. I love meeting people. We've got some great big hunts coming up this fall. Um, lots of new shows coming out. My show is Winchester Deadly Passion. Airs every Sunday morning year round. So if they want to watch things, that's a great place to do it. Now I've been seeing um, this property listed, uh, advertised quite a bit on social media. What am I looking at there? What is it? So that? we did buy a new place called Bear Shield Lodge. Yeah. Um, it's in Illinois. It's in West Central Illinois. It's actually near our hunting property. Um, we don't let people come hunt our ground, but we let people stay there. So okay. we've had family reunions, corporate retreats. It's got 11 bedrooms, nine and a half bathrooms. Really all? cool place yeah. to stay. We, I mean, we brought our whole family down for Christmas. You can sleep 35 people in there. Wow. Um, so it's a fun place, plus great fishing. People can get together, hang out, grill, enjoy the outdoors. It looks like a nice place. That's beautiful. All right, where can we find out more about that or anything else that you got going on? So you can go to BearShieldLodge.com to learn more there or go to MelissaBachman.com, learn more about the show or come out and visit. All right, Melissa, thank you very much. Well, thank you for having me. All Appreciate right. it. So Jennifer Putin is with us right now and we're at the Minnesota Deer Hunters Association booth and you've been working with these guys for a little bit. Uh, yes, so we're actually giving free copies of Adventurous Magazine, which is the only women's hunting and fishing magazine, and we're partnering up for pro wolf management efforts. Very nice. So what have you learned about the wolf management efforts as you've done this issue? Yeah, it's been a lot to learn. So this gal actually lives in Idaho, and so we're comparing, you know, Idaho history and facts with what's happening in Minnesota and Colorado, and it's been wonderful to partner with these guys and learn more about the differences of why we are federally protected, whereas Idaho is one of the few states that you can hunt them. So there's just been a lot to learn and really been great to compare what's happening across the nation. Tell me about your magazine. So yeah, again, it's the only women's hunting and fishing magazine. It's nationwide and reaches Canada, but I'm actually in Northern Minnesota. Right. So, and it's created completely by women, uh, by experienced outdoor women, so for women. And so, yeah. And where can people find out more about it? Adventurousmagazine.com. We're with Sam Ellinger right now. What, what do you got going on here, Sam? So we make all custom bronze products and especially outdoor decor. Um, different about us is that we customize everything all the way down to the exact rack. So we 3D scan your deer antlers and we downsize them and make them into a bronze statue with your specific antlers. Takes up a lot less wall space. Yeah, for sure. Once your wall is full, you start getting these. Wow. But and duck calls. Duck calls, drawer pulls, different types of um, skulls and everything. We can practically make anything with any finish. This is heavy. Like yeah. This is, so these are solid. It's all bronze. That one's actually hollow. This one's hollow. Yep. All but right. the antlers are solid. Antlers are solid. Yep. What, what does one of those antlers weigh? About 25 pounds. <laughs> 25 yeah. pounds. Pretty is, beastly. So tell me about your company a little bit. How long have you been doing this? So this is kind of an expansion business, Bronze Bucks, that we started. But we're Broding Studios. We make police, fire, and military statues. Oh, really? We've been doing it since the 70s. Um, started in Minneapolis. Now we're out kind of by Kimball. Okay. Um, so we kind of specialize in, like I said, police, fire, military, miniatures, all the way up to life size. So whose idea was it to get into the outdoor side of things? Um, kind of me and my boss. Okay. We're both into hunting. So sure. that, you know, if we can provide a customized product for somebody that is within a good price range, why not? These are, are these your deer then? No, I wish. All right. <laughs> these are really cool products. Good luck this week. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. So now we made it to a booth with Jamie Rockney. Jamie, how's it going? Great, how are you? This is a foraging booth or foraging business that you have? Correct, yes. Okay. I right. take people out on guided mushroom hunts. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right, I saw you had Hank Shaw in the booth here with you. Yeah. I see he just wandered off. Um, so he's got his books here. And then what, what do you have here at the booth? So I have some things for sale um, that I have um, 
a lot of friends that have made nice mushroom artsy things for me. I'm not sure. the artist, but um, we've got a lot of like antler carved morels. Looks like a slingshot. <laughs> yeah, they're very realistic. Um, and my, cool. my neighbor makes the pottery for me and I've got a lot of educational books that I love from uh, people that I really trust for helping with foraging mushroom cookbooks and um, Books, yeah. That's becoming more and more popular, I think. Uh, have you found that you're getting more and more people interested in taking a class and learning about this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for some reason, mushrooms are just kind of popular in like even the fashion world. <laughs> but yeah, so the foraging world in is... In the fashion world? Yeah, well, What's it's on working? clothes and purses and and everything. It's, it's everywhere. Maybe it's just because I'm more in tune to it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, people are definitely into the foraging more and more, I think, as they're trying to eat healthier, yeah. even like using less plastic, you know, not Culture. having to buy mushrooms from a store wrapped in plastic and just to eat healthier. So um, there's a lot of medicinal benefits that it's go along with It's amazing how the healthy they are. And yeah. I, like, I struggle eating mushrooms a little bit, but yeah. wild mushrooms, morels in particular, really helped me get into eating mushrooms more. Yeah. And the, the health benefits of them are kind of amazing. They are. Yeah, so many things to, you know, curing cancer, helping with your memory and focus yeah. and yeah. Which I need there, a lot of, a lot of help I know. With that, yeah. Sure. I'm definitely taking a lot of the lion's mane. Yeah. <laughs> That's the memory and focus one. So are you from Minnesota? Yeah. Okay. I actually live in Jordan, Minnesota. I grew okay. up in Watertown, Minnesota. Yeah. So. All right. Do you so do you take people out year round for different types of mushrooms that are coming up at different times um, of the year? Um I usually start in May and then I'll go for through miles. October. So okay. I haven't done um, any classes outdoors in the winter besides maybe like a tree identification class okay. um, but I'll do some online classes zoom classes or even classes in a brewery you know with the presentation style you've done stuff with Mike Kempinek haven't you I have yes yeah, okay so yes. I've, I've known Mike for a while I've done okay. some filming with him yeah so what is your favorite mushroom okay um, I guess I'm gonna have to go with Hen of the Woods even though it's like not a super exciting mushroom because I don't know it's maybe more common but it's so delicious and it's the first mushroom that I found that got me into okay. mushroom hunting um, so but it's I would a little nostalgic then too. it is okay. but I also think it tastes I would rate it right up there with a morel mushroom for me it's a more versatile mushroom when you find one you maybe find a three pound mushroom or a 15 pound mushroom Jeez. a lot easier to find and yeah you can really fill up your your pantry quick in your freezer so anybody watching this or listening to this right now they want to get into it what's the first piece of advice you give somebody that wants to get into foraging um, so honestly like like I do the guided mushroom hunts but I do think that going out with an expert is by far the quickest and easiest way to like really up your game if you will in the mushroom hunting world because um, there are books that you can use but it's hard to feel real confident when you're just looking at a book but if you have somebody there that like yes you can eat that and well, you can, the you can thing, smell it you know all these things and they just you know give you the confidence people get nervous about it oh you yeah know, you don't want to get the wrong one so I think yeah. going out with somebody that you know is experienced I think is important yeah and whether it's me or another forager or the Minnesota Mycological Society um, just yeah go out with somebody that's done it before but just start if you want to do it on your own, just start getting out there and taking pictures and just observing what's out there and then you'll start seeing certain mushrooms over and over again and you'll start to be able to differentiate them more, sure. one from another. So just getting out there, whether you pick one to take it home and eat it or not, like that's not always the point. They're just fascinating to look at. Yeah, it's fun to go up. hunt, really, you know, yeah. to be out there. All right, where can people find you online and learn a little bit more about what you do? Yeah. I have a website, chickofthewoods.com, so you can find my events on my website. Otherwise, follow me on social media. Um, Facebook is Chick of the Woods or Instagram. All right. Yeah. Jamie, thank you very much. Thank you. A lot of people may not realize that we have elk in Minnesota, not just elk, but big elk. And every so often you hear some stories about elk hunting in Minnesota that, that grab some headlines. And last year, the big story was the brother-sister duo, dynamic duo that had a lot of success uh, elk hunting. 
so Gary and Shar, and it's Gary Prezekles, Prezekles, and Shar Peterson. Peterson. All right, uh, tell me about these animals uh, that you shot here behind us. Um, I can tell you, there were uh, residents for many years. We you knew, we knew of them. them. Okay. Yep. All right. We've got several camera pictures over the last five years of this one and that one. Um, yeah, we, you, and you drew a landowner tag. Are you at a landowner tag? Char drew the landowner tag. Drew the landowner tag. Okay. And I drew the ten-year. Oh, so okay. The ten-year draw. All right. Because it's it's pretty rare to get tags uh, in itself in Minnesota, let alone shoot an animal of this caliber. It is. Now, you, do you guys live up in that area then? We do. We live about an hour from that. Area. Rosal. We live in Rosal. Okay. We both live in Rosal. So opening day comes around, uh, probably prior prior to that, a couple of days prior to that, you were uh, the whole week prior. Oh, you've been scouting the animals. Yep. Yeah, the whole week, all week long. All right, we had Every probably day, twenty morning trail night. cameras out, and yeah, we put the time in. So did you have to decide who was going to shoot the bigger one? Did you arm uh, wrestle we, or? We, we had camera men with us. Like he had his son, I had my son. Okay. Yep. And so we separated and we kind of knew areas where we were going to, we, we decided where yep. to go. We just about changed the first morning because we thought the wind was wrong. We were going to back out, but no, we kept to the plan. And we saw the one, it, the first very morning, saw this one and we didn't shoot it because we thought there's got to be a bigger one. But then we evaluated the pictures and sure enough, we decided we're going back for that one. Yeah. We're going to go for it. Did you guys shoot them on the same day? No. no. Okay. So what, what day did you shoot yours then? Mine was on September 9th, the very opening evening of elk season. Yeah. Okay. So tell me about, did you see it and then try to like stalk it or were you in a stand or tell in me about the morning, the we actually we passed it up and then we decided my son looked at the his phone and he said I think you know we should we should go after it and then the wind we, we tried to follow it it quit bugling we couldn't locate it so we backed out waited till that evening and then shot it that evening about 250 yards waited four hours in the stand <laughs> and and it came out just like like it should have yeah that's amazing. What were you shooting? Uh, 7mm08. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. All right, so tell me about your animal here. Um, my neighbor actually called yep. uh, the Saturday night. We were processing her elk, and uh, he, my phone kept ringing, and I ended up uh, looking at it at 1 o'clock in the morning, and he said, you got to come over, because he had a trail camera picture of Bruno here. Bruno. <laughs> well, anyway... Uh, uh, we hunted them the next day and we never saw them. And then everybody left the area because we had like a hundred vehicles in our deer camp to look at hers um, and uh, neighbors and everybody. So then uh, when I got quiet um, that morning, uh, I heard him bugling in the woods and I walked right by him because it was five o'clock in the morning. And then uh, I had actually seen two other bull elk in a soybean field and they were smaller. So I came back and I chirped. I chirped them out of the woods with uh, cow talk and then I, uh, I made the shot. What, it wasn't you, good. No? <laughs> no. You had to do a follow-up shot? Yes. Yeah. I shot him with a 300 Ultra Mag. Okay. So what was, what, uh, what did it score? Um, the score has been kind of iffy because uh, after the, ta he got scored before the taxidermist and it was uh, 413 and 3 eighths was the net score. Okay. And then uh, after the taxidermist did his thing, it the, the rack actually folded in. I lost three inches there and three inches somewhere else. I lost six inches. Okay. So I think it's four, um, 406 and something, or 407 something. All right, and how about yours? Uh, mine is gross 368, but it had a lot of deductions. One side was bigger than the other, so it ended up not being Boone and Crockett, but it's 354 and some eights. Yeah. I can't remember the eights. So. Uh, both amazing animals. 
Uh, do you, does this one rank anywhere? It's the number one bull in um, uh, for uh, hunting in the state of Minnesota and non -tip one. non typical number category. Non -typical. Yeah, it's the number Man. one non typical. It's a, it just blows me away that we have these animals in Minnesota. We've got pictures of him where this tine actually goes down. Oh, really? A couple years ago, and then we got pictures of him like two years ago where it sticks straight out, and then this year they're up that I shot him in. How old do you think he is? The DNR says they'll let us know in one full year from the time we... Yeah, because they test harvest. every animal, age yep. them, and check them all. They took yeah. a tooth. Yeah. And uh, we're figuring 10. 10-ish or 12. Had you shot an elk before? Uh, yeah, in Colorado. Colorado, okay. Was that yep. this one bigger than that one? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is my 11th bull in 11 oh, wow. hunts. Oh, okay. So, you, so you've shot a couple of them. Yeah. All right. How about you? I've shot one cow elk in Colorado back in 2005 or something. That's it. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Sporting Journal Radio is a division of Macaba LLC. If you've got a question, comment, or story idea for us, send us an email. Go to sportingjournalradio.com. While you're there, you can learn how to advertise on the show and visit our store for hats, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Go to sportingjournalradio.com.